Hello fellow map makers, welcome to another live map making session. Welcome to our little corner of the internet and hope you're still here even though Easter is fast approaching and you're not already off for a long weekend or if you are and watching this later, hello and hope you had a good weekend. I'm uh, happy to take a look at another new Photographer's annual issue tonight. We uh, had a new one appear, uh, get published last week, and we are uh, have a new map maker, a new artist who created an annual for us, the uh, Alice Pabilski style, which uh, you see um, on the screen. Alice Pabilski is the name of the artist, and. They've been around on the forum and uh, Facebook for a while and created some nice stuff and now we've had the chance to get them to create something for the Cartographer's Annual. New Overland style, hand drawn with uh, inks and watercolors, then scanned and imported uh, into a campaign cartographer. Thanks for, to Sue for doing work doing the importing stuff, the conversion stuff and uh, from there I took it and created the annual style from it. We've already seen a beautiful map from Vivan on uh, the forum and uh, you might want to check that out and I hope more people will use the style in the future. And we'll certainly open to expand it a bit with another annual issue to make it a double-sized drawing style. But let's see what we can do with it tonight. It's a normal overland style in most aspects, so um, we're being, I'm going to be using pretty basic functions trying to take it slow and show map making for newcomers to campaign cartographer. I think the style is very well suited to that because it's easy to put things together. And uh, But if you've got any questions during the session, do post them in the chat. I'll be happy to explain uh, stuff, expand on things I'm doing, try new things with the style. If you've got any ideas, if you want to see anything special, let us know and Sue will forward me anything, anything to me that I don't see directly in the chat. So with that, let's get going. i am uh, got the example map here on screen, but we are going to start a completely fresh new one. And for that, I'm going to click on the new map icon on the file toolbar, click new, I'm going to save my changes and the map type we're looking for is Overland Maps. I'm going to keep the desired settings myself. Option. And from there we are going to take a look where is our style and it's alphabetically sorted. And here's the e Prabilski watercolor style. I think I might just, for a change, uh, use the metric version of the style. It's no, not a big difference, or really in the workflow, no difference at all of form um, uh, overland maps. So we are just going to go with that. And I'm going to click Next. And then here I can set the size of my map. And let's do a little bit smaller one, 500 by 400 kilometers. So nice small region or medium sized region that we can map and then I'm going to click finish and I'm going to go to my videos folder with the streams and save the map. Here we are, our blank C background and uh, from here we're going to start with the drawing process. First thing I do is draw a coastline, at least if I do have a coast and as I want to show both sea and land stuff, I'm going to include one on this map. And as always, or as in most styles, we have multiple options to start our drawing tools. Standard one is up here on the left toolbar. There's the default land mass button that will just uh, start the default drawing tool for this. If I left click it, see, I'll then get a prompt to uh, start my mapping 
a drawing process. I just uh, to note I have re-enabled uh, the uh, floating tool prompt, which I have not been using in the last few video sessions, just to show it off. Um, that is helpful because it shows you what to do, the, what the campaign cutter expects you to do right when at the mouse cursor. It can get uh, a bit in the way of the drawing process because the, it's necessarily fairly large. You can always um, disable it later from the tools options menu here is the display floating prompt option with that you can turn it off but for now i'll leave it on so that is one option to start the tool if you right click the same button the landmass tool it gives you all the landmass option or the land options um in here it's not uh, definitely terribly many different ones in this style but you do get the grassland options as well see it shows you all the tools that have land in the filter so if you later create a variant landmass tool that also has land in the name it will also show up in this view and the third option is um, the landmass drawing tool is included in the symbol catalog for the mountains and so uh, it's basically a shortcut in the catalog to the same drawing tool so you can also cl uh, click on this uh, option in the catalog window to start the tool we just want to go to do here and then i'm gonna start now uh <laughs> just a little thing uh i noticed for myself is i tend to draw if i draw a coastline i always tend to you know, put the coastline facing towards the west of the map to the left that's probably a heritage of starting all my mapping careers and my interest in fantasy maps with the middle earth maps by uh J.R. Tolkien and uh so I'm basically uh just following that pattern I've uh, learned my map making with so I'm going to make an effort uh, this time and put my coastline on the other side facing eastwards so let's do that and uh, I click often start on the the map border here and then go from there so you see this is a fractal drawing tool which uh, has uh, adds random nodes from based on the fractal function between the two points you click you can always re-randomize the section of the map you're drawing by hitting the spacebar until you've got the uh, section you want and then click the next point go to the next section do the same thing over you can also if you want to undo a section you know think you know, i've been going in the wrong direction for a few clicks always press uh, delete on the key bar uh, on the uh, keyboard to undo previous steps so i'm gonna do this here and draw a little bay Another one from here, so we do get a peninsula. And then as I get to the map border, I click beyond that and that attaches my landmass to the map border, clicking the corners. And then as I get towards the end or my beginning of where I started the landmass, I'm going to right click and that will finish the tool. And here we are, refreshing the screen will act, you know, show me the sheet effects. And you can see the beautiful uh, watercolor-based uh, texture that Alice created on paper and Sue scanned and worked with that uh, on the computer. And it just looks nice. You will see, you can see the little um, a bit of stripes going left and that's the repeating pattern. Basically, it's the uh, texture repeats at some point and with a varied fill like this you will on a larger map like this do see the repeating pattern but we're going to use symbols covering this up and it in the, that way it will hardly be noticeable at the end all right so let's see uh, where we go from here Next step, oh, I do want to create a few islands and stuff, so I'm not quite done with the landmass. I'm going to use the landmass tool again and just draw 
few islands on my map. Also, pieces of land jutting in from the map border. I can see. And if you've got something that you don't like, you can always use the edit function of the drawing tool. You can see, press E, then select an edge on the command prompt. I'm going to do that E, that gives you the big cursor, the little square. And where you click then, will the, the editing will start. So I want to make this a little bit smaller here. Draw to the point I want to go, then right click and then attach my edited section to the original coastline. Refresh the screen. And there's my edit on the landmass. I can also use um, with, uh, a drawing tool to draw inland seas here. Um, we have the cutout tool, which basically will uh, break a hole into our landmass. So say I want to put in a large lake or inland sea here. I can draw this and due to a color key sheet effect on the landmass sheet, this will appear as a hole as a break in the landmass. And here we do have a very nice layout for our coast to start with. All right. Yes, so we do have a command there from Vivon that uh, some of the pre-drawn grass, swamp and scrub uh, textures or markings in here do break up this pattern very nicely. That's indeed true. So let's have a look at that. If I right click or left click the default terrain tool, we do have a default grassland terrain with, with you see these little, little grass scribbles. Okay. And then I can just draw this on here, larger grassland area. Some and there you see, because also the texture is the same, but aligned a little differently, it breaks up the whole pattern, makes it very nicely. And I'm already seeing that Remy is challenging me to put an island on the map, uh, on the lake, which of course, uh, would something that can definitely exist and might be nice to uh, draw. And we can give it a try uh, for one. Say so if I take the landmass tool and just put an island on here, you will see that it works fine actually. Yes, there we are. We have got the little lake uh, island. That's It's a bit tricky because that depends, I think, on the um, order things are drawn. If I um, from the C thing here, yeah, then the island is behind that lake. But as long as you keep the lake on top of that, you're fine. And we are. All right, so next step, I want to put in a mountain range. So we've got some, uh, we've got the catalog actually already loaded, but I do want to make sure that I've got my layers and everything set correctly. You can see I'm on the vegetation layer here on top of the moment. This is our property indicator uh, that shows all the current uh, values, like the color I've selected, and the layer and the fill style, and that doesn't quite match the mountain symbols. So what I do is I click the Minerals Mountains catalog icon, which just reloads that um, catalog, but also sets the default layer for where the mineral and mountains should go. So uh, we are automatically on that layer. You can always also just set this manually by checking the little checkbox here in the layer list, and that's going to be the layer you're drawing on. So I'm going to start with a couple peaks and place them as uh, the uh, center of my mountain range. So basically the higher peaks with a snow cover on top. Just going to build a mountain range like this here. 
and then I'm gonna click the green mountains to build around that and just fill out this area. It's the main mountain or the the mountains, the lower mountains actually are drawn in green in the style. It matches very well with the, with the default land texture and there's no need to specifically outline the mountain ranges to give them a gray or brown outline. So we're just working with the symbols here. See, I'm just not keep, keeping it to one small line, but with the uh, some side ranges and foothills going out from the main range. And I'm not bothered about overlapping correctly here at this point. So you'll see some weird overlaps here if I see look at this here because I drew the green ones after the grey mountains. We're gonna fix this in a moment with our sort symbols command. Also want to add a few mountains here on that peninsula. And perhaps a few more here all together with some grey peaks on the southern edge of our map. Here we go. And now I'm gonna, you can already see that uh, the map border, the uh, white screen around the map border hides the edges of the symbols here. Bless you, Aza. That was my cat sneezing. Uh, all right. Didn't know. Don't know whether you heard that. All right. And now I want to sort my symbols. I'm going to go to symbols, sort symbols and map. I can just select select everything, but because it will anyway. Uh, in any case, just sort the symbols and not the other stuff. And now, we'll, if you check this, the overlap between the green and gray symbols is correct now. All right. So I've got the mountain ranges down and can also add some more hills, smaller hills around this. To extend my ranges even further. Some hills around this range here. And going some on the southern edge of our landmass. Yes, you can see each click of one of these symbols places one from a grouping of symbols, a so-called uh, uh, collection. And uh, for example, here this is the hills I'm placing, and you only see one in the catalog window. If I click the little plus on the top left, it will show me all the different symbols that are in the collection. And each time I click on the map here, when the uh, and I've got the collection closed, um, let me just start with this. On, sorry, uh, confused myself there for a second. It doesn't matter whether this is closed or not. It's just uh, it will place the first uh, selected symbol uh, down here and then choose a random one, or you can use the tabulator key to cycle through the different symbols. They will just go through them in order until you've got the one you want. Then the next one is going to be a random one again. Or you can just select one of these symbols here and place it on the map. And actually it does matter if you select one of these here while the uh, collection is open it will always place the one until I uh, start over again. 
white. So one, I don't want to place a hill on my little island here. And there we are. That's a good, good selection of hills and mountains here. Next up in my usual workflow is the rivers. So I'm uh, gonna go to the coastal um, catalog. Yes, you can see there's some river shortcuts to the drawing tools here. You can also, of course, just use the default river um, catalog button again, or right click, not catalog button, drawing tool button, and select from this here. And uh, I'm gonna start with the wide river tool because I want to start from the river mouth and going up into the mountains. And so let's have a look. I'm gonna click here just beyond the landmass and then draw my river. Now, do, do I want to go to the lake there? No, I'm gonna go up here alongside the mountain range. Here I'm gonna stop and gonna switch to my standard river so it just gets a little narrow at this point. Follow this further up all the way to the map border. Now I do want to split into two fairly um, same size paths at that point where I stopped. It's a bit hard to see here now at the moment, but I can just find it again by using the endpoint modifier, F5. Click on the lower part of the river and my next point jumps to the endpoint of the where I stopped. And I can continue or start my second river fork there going down in this direction. And then I'm going to choose some narrow ones and going to make these tributaries and then use the F9 key as the on modifier to put the smaller river exactly on the larger one. And one more down from here. And that way I do have a nice river system going from the along the side of the mountains towards the sea. Um I could put in at least a cup one or two up here on this in this area. Oh actually what I'm not I'm not gonna do this. I'm actually gonna put a bit of a desert in here later and assume that the mountains block my prevailing winds and uh, so the water all falls on the southwestern side and the northeastern side doesn't get much. It's in the rain shadow and doesn't get much water. So here I'm debating myself a bit. Do I want to assume this is more of an inland sea and the end point of rivers? So like the Dead Sea for example in uh, Israel or uh, do I want to make it a large lake which has an outflow and can go onto the sea? And oh, here I'm, I'm going to opt for the end point here, really, I think. And so I'm just going to put in a couple rivers. This direction and then Perhaps I'll make this a big swampy area where basically just uh, the water meanders slowly towards the sea, very low lying ground without one clear big river or even a few big rivers. All right, so well, we might as well do that while we're at it. So I'm gonna click the tool here and grab the swamp. And I can use the trace tool to trace an existing entity. So I'm going to take the edge of my inland sea here, just draw this across here, then trace the coastline at this point. And there we are. Well, that's looking pretty good. 
I could put in actually a few, I think I will put in a few narrow rivers meandering around this here, just to show that the water generally does flow towards the sea from here. And we can also use our lake tool to put in a few lakes. There we are. Quite like that. That looks good. All right, so we've got this swamp down here and I do did want to add a um, desert on the northern edge of our map here. So let's see what we have in the natural features uh, catalog. We do have some rocky terrain. We could make it rocky, we'll make it a desert. We could also mix the two. So let's start with a desert more on this side here. As you can see, these desert uh, tool is uh, does extend beyond the map border and that's so um, you don't get the effect that the edge fade effect is visible on the uh, map border here. You just see uh, while I followed the coastline exactly we do get a bit of a green and this is because we have an edge fade effect on the desert sheet giving us a little bit of a transition which looks nice for the coastline. And now let's see how it looks if we put in some rocky terrain overlapping the desert here. The terrain tools are set up to all have their own sheets, so the sheet effect should be working on that edge there. There we are. And let's see, we do have the transition from the desert. We don't have much of a transition here. Do we are we missing a sheet effect on the terrain mountain sheet? Let's have a quick look. Let's do a quick save in between so we're not losing any work if something happens. Oh, indeed, uh, the terrain mountains um, it doesn't actually have a, the sheet, ef a sheet effect on. So we're going to double check that in the template later. For now, I'm just going to grab my edge fade inner sheet and just paste that on the mountain sheet. So I took the one from the grassland and pasted it on the mountains. And now we have a nice transition. All right, so that's looking good. And but I want to, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the green hills here a little bit, also because they don't quite match my um, desert colors. But I do not notice I did grab one of the uh, ink markings here for desert, so I'm gonna not delete that. Here we go. I might also do away with a few of the green hills here. Not all of them, just a few. And then I'm going to grab the dudes and rebuild some hills with those symbols. They do fit the desert color scheme better. And I'm also going to grab some rocks to put them on the rocky area here. There we go. And there we have a nice rocky wasteland slowly transitioning into the desert. So next up I do want to create a little bit of forest here on the more on the western edge of the map. And for that I'm going to load up the vegetation catalog. And we do have some forest tools here. You can see we have a forest version. We can just put in a fill, but we can also use the tools to fill an area with uh, trees. So I'm going to grab the deciduous forest here and then just outline. Not going to put it over the rivers because the symbols will cover uh, the river. So you can see it does sprinkle the symbols a little bit over the area, not putting them too closely together. 
which is nice, so we can actually see a bit more of the symbols. We can always, if you want to make it denser, add individual trees later. And so I'm going to grab more of the jungle tool to place some jungle trees down here. And a bit of the pine trees as I go into the mountains. Though I think uh, it's probably easier to sprinkle most of them individually. I'm just put in a few so we do get a little bit of the background texture there for the pine trees. But as you can see, we only get a couple uh, in the area because the area is very small. So I'm just going to grab the pine symbol and fill in more of the area with tree symbols in here. Placing them as they are, they get placed on the symbols sheet. Um, if you have overlaps where you want the trees definitely be on top of mountains and so on, then we do also have a symbols trees sheet to plus put them on there. So then that makes sure they are on top of everything else, on top of all the other symbols. But for now, I'm gonna just gonna sprinkle these among the mountains because uh, let's I'll check this in a second, see whether I can hide them a little bit behind the mountain peaks. For if I go now into symbols. Sort symbols at map, select all of them again, do it. Then you can see that the trees get placed nicely behind the mountains, showing a um, sheltered valley there where some uh, trees are growing. But if you want to show some, so for example, if I wanted to show some pines on top of this mountain here, that's just go in and I place them on here and then later did my sort symbols and map. Then they are obviously placed behind that hill and that's not where I wanted them. And in that case, I'm going to move them to the symbols trees sheet. Oop, be careful here a bit. Select the correct symbols, not this one here. Do it and put them on the symbol street sheet. And that way they're on top of the hills. Oh, actually I do have a bit of a drop shadow on that sheet. Oh, let's turn that off here. There we go. And uh, now I can sort as much as, as I want. Let's just show you, sort all of the symbols because the symbols only get sorted on their respective sheets. They will never get placed behind the hill if I do it this way. Okay, I certainly want to place some more individual trees later, but I have to have the main vegetation areas down, so we are pretty good. Yeah, we've got a question from Joshua whether the uh, trees are supposed to be as large compared to the symbols here. Yes, uh, that's the default scale, the same for all. And because uh, Alice drew, drew them th this way, they do show up. But if you want to change the scaling of the symbols, you can do that and adjust that to your own liking, of course. So from here, I'm going to go into, uh, well, actually, I'm seeing the farmland symbols right here right now. So I can actually put in a few farmland symbols, just showing uh, areas where civilization is. And these I might want, to, uh, no, actually, that's fine. Like it is. So there we are. And then I'm going to go switch to the structures, uh, symbol catalogs. And uh, there we do have the symbols which we can um, show cities and towns with and so on. So let's put in an important city here. 
on our map. And I'm seeing that's not quite... Well, let's put it here, but then move the... Because you see the uh, interior there is uh, transparent, so you can see the background behind it, but we might not want to overlap this directly with the farmland. So I'm just going moving the farmland a little bit. That looks good. And here's the cat that's coming to check on me. Uh, do you like that, Aza? Is that okay? Seems to be fine. To be fine. All right. So um, let's continue and put in a bit of a town up here. Let's see. One are here, that side of the lake, one on the southern shore, and another one down here. Oh, that's up here. There we are. From there, I'm going to go for some villages. Here along the river, and further up. What's the desert here? One on this shore, one on here on the outer coast. Then I'm going to grab some hamlets. Here we go. Here on the island. And one up here. There we are. I've got, got a bridge and we've got a big, big river here. Oh, so we might just want to put bridge across that. Makes sense here. And um, then we've got a big castle. Let's put this at the center of our kingdom somewhere here. We'll probably also have the castle here. Here we go. Towers. Always nice for me to depict border forts and uh, similar structures with. So we might have some one here. And I want to place it on the on the mountain here. The, the usual problem only is going to be that uh, if I sort it, it's going to appear behind the, uh, the, uh, the mountain. So I can do the same thing as with the trees. I'm going to, even if it's not a tree, to put it on the symbol street sheet and then it will stay on there. Then we do have a lighthouse. So we certainly makes sense to have a lighthouse here showing the entrance into that bay, guiding the ships, and perhaps one here on the northern edge. That island. We have some camps. So put something here on the edge of the of the desert, and some nice deserty ruins which we can put in the center here. Again, I want to put this on top of a dune. Actually, no. It's actually not necessary, or it might actually be behind the dunes. I'm just going to put this in here and do my symbol sorting again. And there's my obelisk nicely sorted into the rest of the symbols. I've got tombs, so let's put one here in somewhere at the top of that river. And one here, at the end of the landmass. And then we do have some roads we uh, can use to put to connect all of our different settlements together. So I've got the here. Put this over the bridge, and then going to this town. See, it's probably going to fairly 
impractical to put a road through these swamps here, so instead we're just going to go on and go around uh, the lake. Probably be more common to take a boat across here to avoid the large way uh, there. And then one road leaving them up down here. And from the city northward, all the way up to this town here. And we'll also need zoom in a bit and make this road follow the river. River. Oh, I'm seeing here I've got one river not connecting quite correctly to the to our main river. So we want to fix that. So we're going to go in, grab the node edit tool, grab the end of our river. Oops, that's and there the reason why that happened. I used the on modifier to place the end of that river, but because there's this hardly visible terrain polygon on there. My on modifier did not hit the river, but instead hit the uh, online the uh, polygon beneath. So we we'll grab the tool from here and move that bit. There we are. And from there, I'm going to uh, use the minor row tool to show that the roads going onwards from here are not quite as large. You see it's a broken uh, line style. Use this to go into the desert and further northwards all the way along these pyramids here and leaving the map on the north edge. Also going to use this to further go upriver from our town. following the river all the way up to this settlement here. Then I'm going to put in a road going along here, skirting the grassland, going to this settlement. Probably want something connecting the tower here to our road network. And then we do have a little bit to go from this settlement here the outlying in here and no we'll not go actually I'm think I'm missing a bit of an even smaller road like a path or something so let's have a look whether we can do something like that so uh, first off I'm gonna check out my tools and Click on the advanced button here. We are on the ro minor road already. So let's do a road path. New tool. If you've got one selected and then create a new one, the new one have will have the previous one's properties. So we now just need to bother about the appearance of our line. So the properties. And here's the line width. as uh, so expresses a fraction of our map border. So we're just going to make this not half as wide, but three quarters as wide. And then I want a different line style. Let's see whether we already have a path line style. No, we only have road line style. So what are we going to do? We first need to create a new line style. For that, I'm going into my line style dialog up here. I'm going to select my um, oh, road style, if I can find it. There it is. We've, sometimes we do have several ones. Uh, there's another one in here. Sometimes a bit tricky if they have the same name. Line styles can have the same name. Well, let's have a look. And it's a simple 50-50. Uh, um, the storing style basically you skip the same length as you uh, draw the same length 
First you draw half of the section, then skip half of the section. This is what this says. And we can just make it a bit smaller by 0.1 size to make it the pattern smaller, so more dot-like. And give it a try. See, I've uh, got the... Ah! No, that's not what I wanted. I did not want to edit the road style. I did want to create a new one. And um, oop. Um, we've got a question first is whether the uh, percent of map border is the height or the width. It's actually for of the wider. Uh, it's the percentage of the wider of the two. If I remember correctly, yes, I think so. So I do want to create a new style. I want to create a path style. I want to make it 0.1 size uh, section. And then I don't want to paper scale. And I don't want to scale if it ends. And um, pattern length. I uh, know. Ah. Not quite right what I'm doing here. So I want to replace this. I want to draw half of the full length and then extend. By, so I get a skip section, skip by half of the full length. And then I'm one defining my pattern length here with 0.1. Let's see how small that is. Probably a bit too small, but we're gonna have a look. I'm gonna now gonna go into my road tools again path and in the properties I'm gonna set my line style to the path here. Okay and see if I draw a section here that well, that was a misclick. Style path stern of sheet effects is my line style so Either it's so small that I'm not seeing uh, the ones, or I've made a mistake. No, I, yeah, can, without the sheet effects on, you can see that it's my section is so small that I'm really not seeing the um, uh, that it is a broken line when I do apply a blur effect like the sheet effects do. So I'm going to go into the, this again and make this section much smaller, or much larger, sorry. Okay, okay. And there we are. This is too large. Now it's about the same size as our main road. So we do want to make this, say, 2. Okay, and there we are. And this is now a nice... Oh, I can make it a little bit more dotted even by going to the line style again and making it so I'm drawing only a quarter of the line and then skipping three quarters of a uh, section of the pattern. And as you can see there we now have wider space dots. And this is what I want. So I'm just going to erase this bit and now I'm going to use my path drawing tool to draw a path from here to our tomb. There we are. And perhaps also have a little path following this river here. Yes, uh, so the, the sound there is Asa uh, tearing up the, the carpet. The poor, poor carpet that gets maltreated quite often. Uh, so that's, that's what you've got to live with when you have cats. All right, so I've got my roads laid down. And uh, I do want to do a little bit with the... Uh, with C, so I'm going to take a look here at my catalog window for C. I do have some water. Uh, in the shallows tool, I can either 
grab the terrain for this and lay down a polygon like I did with the grasslands or the swamp and that fills this area with a brighter version of the texture and also some wave sim symbols. I'm going to do the same down here. But you can also grab the symbol itself and just use this to place some individual markings down. Show griefs or shallow areas as you prefer. Here we go. And also might place in some rocky areas, some cliffs here. There we go. And if we want to add a bit of uh, darker sections, we could also always grab the contours tool and draw in a darker contour for the water here. Again, this extends beyond the map border because it has a sheet of uh, an edge fade effect applied. So yeah, it doesn't it's the areas are really too small to see much of this, but so it mostly vanishes on the ed the edges here. But we are we are fine with that. All right, so next up we are going to go into the labeling. So perhaps let's put down uh, compass rows and scale bar first. In this style, because we didn't have much in the way of border political symbols, we can um, uh, put them in the among the border symbol catalog. Easy for ease of access. So I'll just grab the compass rows. Size is nice as it is. We don't need to change much there. It does fit neatly into the corner here. And then a uh, kilometer scale bar. So this would be 200 kilometers. Let's make put in just the 100 kilometer version. Let's right click. Ah, but uh, we have to be careful because uh, this is a half. Um, the default symbol scale at this size will be half. We do need to set this to one to actually show 100 kilometers. Otherwise, we'll just show 50 instead with the wrong labeling. Here we go. And this is, fits in nicely. Okay, that's not where these should are supposed to go, or either the sheet effect is incorrect. Let's have a look. No, they should not go on the sheet C. They should go on the sheet, on the text sheet actually. Let's have a quick look. Well, there's some error in the symbols. Let's go in here. If I click on the options, yes, the catalog doesn't have the sheet effect set. Oh, something, another th little thing to fix. So these should actually go on the text sheet. And uh, I did want to move this a bit so it does not sit on the, exactly on the scale bar. There. there we go. And now we can go in and set the color for our text. For our cities and stuff I do want a dark gray and I want Go it to go on the text level sheet. And then I can put in names for our towns and cities. Turn off snap again so I can place it correctly. I can align the text by hitting the uh, key uh, the Letters L for left alignment, R for right alignment, center uh, for center alignment, or for the vertical alignment, T for top. So right top would be here, left top here. 
B for bottom and M for middle for the vertical alignment, but I do want a top left alignment here. That means basically where the insertion point goes for the text. Text label. And then perhaps a little smaller label for a feature like the castle. that I'm going to align it to the right and make it smaller. Here we go. And if I want to keep my label sizes consistent, I can now just continue with the smaller labels. But if I want to go back to the larger labels, I can use the extract properties. And this will set my text to the same as and L1 if I click on the baseline. So I can Put in some text levels up here for this town. And bottom. The nice thing is if you of course, I can basically place the, the text label at the same spot if I uh, use another alignment. Say I'm going to go for the left center alignment or center alignment here. I can still place it exactly at this this size. But um, scaling with two time forms will then sometimes be a little off from the town because scaling is always uh, respects the insertion point. Other two type forms can't absolutely fully freely scale. That's why uh, sometimes they appear, appear larger or smaller on the map. Or if you change the font later, then um, that's it's different. With if you take care to choose the right insertion point, it will stay at the correct spot. If you change it later and the insertion point is somewhere else, it might appear further off from the landmark you labeled with it. So I try to, if I remember, always choose my insertion point for the text carefully. Right. So here I'm going to go with left and bottom. Or I could go left and center, no, no, left and middle. Place it directly on the left side, on the right side of the of the town. There we are. Well, I've got one more town, so I want to make, place, label all my uh, cities and towns of the same size. So I'm gonna go, go, this, go to Spay. Bottom left. To place it nicely in, into the bay here. It's always nice if, you, if your text does not overlap too many other things. While it does have an outline that makes it legible, the fewer stuff directly out, uh, around the text, the more legible it is from farther away. And now I'm thinking I might want to make the labels for the main city, this is the only city on the map, a little bit larger from the town. So let's have a look. I'm going to use change text properties, click the bottom line of my text, press D for do it, and there we can see our, the current height we have is 7.5, so let's make it 9. And as you can see, it enlarges, but the insertion point to the top left stays the same, and I'm not suddenly overlapping the city. All right, well, there's my town, and then I'm going to go with extract properties to my smaller labels and continue placing my smaller labels on the map. Like this. Bottom left, place it here, and there we go. And I would just have a few little more labels to do and then I'd be finished with my map. 
but our hour of mapping is done and I think we've created a very nice little map with Alice's new uh, map style and I leave it at that for now. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope you have a wonderful Easter weekend whether with family on your own, uh, traveling or staying at home. I hope you enjoy it, have a good time and see you again next week. All the best. Bye-bye.